Hi, today I'm just going to show you a little impromptu video on some things I discovered on removing and reinstalling the air conditioning compressor on my 94 Beer Grillmaster. Bit of a hassle, but not in, quite in the way I expected. I'll explain what I did to take it out, and I'll show you how I put it back in. It's sort of easier than some people say. You know, my two new compressors. Is in the shop manual they say that you should raise the car in a jack and try and get the back bolt out. That's the trouble. The two bolt, three bolts in the front, no problem, but it's this back bracket that's a problem. You can't get it at the engine mount, the frame's in the way. So they say in the shop manual to try and put a 3 8 drive long deep socket on it and try and get it out. And if you can't get it out, raise the engine, uh, take the bolt out of the engine mount and raise the engine. I wasn't going to mess around with that. I looked underneath and I could barely even see the bolt, let alone get any tools on it. So this is crazy. So I thought, what have I got to lose? I went up on top and I took off the refrigerant hose and tucked it over behind the uh, dipstick line. And then I looked down here. The compressor is compressor installed right now, but anyway, if you look down in there when it's installed, you'll be able to get at the bolts. And so what I did, I managed to get the this is the back bracket and this is the stud. So I managed to get the stud right out how you managed to get the nut off the stud. And to do that, let me see this one. Yeah, I still have it. A uh, 3 8 drive shallow socket was too short. A deep socket was too long, it hit the frame. So I ended up using a half inch drive 916 socket. And which is not deep, which is not a deep sock, it's just a standard half inch drive, but it worked to be just right, just the right length to clear the stud and not hit the frame. It's real tight in there, believe me. So I took off the three front bolts and then I managed to get the socket on the nut and got the nut off the stud. Figured, yay! Then I went to take the compressor out. And when I went to take it out, I couldn't get the back end off the stud. It would it, it would get it to like there, and then hit the compressor would hit the frame. I discovered this plastic thing here. This was hitting the frame. I couldn't get this bolt out either because it was in the way of things. You know what this plastic thing for? This plastic thing is your anti-compressor removal device. It keeps you from removing the compressor. <laughs> anyway. So I figured, oh, maybe that's why they say to remove the tensioner. So I moved the belt tensioner on the front, so it went from uh, about a quarter inch too long to an eighth of an inch too long. Just maddening. What? Why does it have to be so long for? So I fussed and fiddled. What did I do? I couldn't get these two bolts off easily either. One other person said you could take these two off, but this, you can't get at them very easily. This was the easiest to get at. And then I thought, see there's a Torx fitting on the end of the stud. I thought, well, let's try it, see if we can get it out, and then I got the stud out. Once the stud out, and then once I got the stud out of the engine block, it was the easiest pie to take the compressor out. They're done. So perhaps now you can see that putting it back in will be pretty easy. I'll slide it back in, bolt, uh, put the bolts on the front loosely, and then screw the stud in with the uh, Torx bit, and then tighten, and then I'll tighten the front bolts and then tighten the nut and I'm done. So I'll show you that step by step and if, uh, as I go. I can't do it while I'm doing it. It's, it's too awkward. Got my hands greasy and everything. Also I noticed my new compress the uh, compressor here when I got it didn't have the stud here. So I got a I noticed that the Compressor fittings are so there's a big thick block that goes on here, so I just used a vice grip and gra grabbed the threads here, undid it from the old one, and screwed it into the new one, no problem. I put three. This compressor looks real nice. Came out of a Chevy Camaro with a V6. The Chevy Camaro with the V6s use the same compressor as these Roadmasters. This would also apply, this would apply 9496 Roadmasters, few Roadmasters, Dan Wagons. 9496 Chevy Caprice sedans and wagons and the 9496 Cadillac Fleetwoods which use all these use the LT1 V8 this is my old one I don't know the history of the system except when I bought the car the clutch had broken loose from the rubber and uh, I actually, actually was rattling around I couldn't do anything at the time but I thought well, let's try gooping it back together which I did 
and I stuck screwdrivers in here to press it together and the goop actually worked. I tried applying the clutch and it engaged. So then I tried charging it and I might have gotten away with it except that the shaft seal was shot. It hissed out almost as fast and I put it in so that was the end of that. Amazing the goop actually worked. But they should be a lot the new one should be a lot quieter. Look at that. Perfect. You can see the gap in there. Seems to be real low mileage. Got all the paint on it and everything. Came from the States. So I got my tag oil. Shop manual says if you drain the drain both the old and new compressors and whatever comes out of the old one, if it's less than an ounce, put an ounce into the new one. If it's more than an ounce, put whatever comes out of the old one into the new one. Uh, put the same amount into the new one. Well, both of them were empty. Nothing in them. So I fiddled, I sort of thought about it, and I talked to a mechanic and so, and I, uh, the entire system capacity seems to be around 8 to 9 ounces. So I figured, well, I'll put in about 3 ounces, that should be safe, not too much, and enough to lubricate it, because I don't know the history of the system. Because besides, they say the compressor can hold up to 4, it may have up to 4 in it when you remove it, and also there's a catastrophic abrupt leak, 3 ounces can be carried out of the system into the atmosphere, so 3 ounces should be safe. So, so there's the stud here, and the three bolts, and there's this little rubber thing that goes around the power steering hose that goes around the compressor, and there's the tensioner, which I didn't have to remove, <laughs> anyway. So, I'll put this up here. I'll slide it in there. And I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, the compressor is bolted on at the front. Looks a lot nicer than the old one. The screws are bolted down, but not tightened yet. They seem not to tighten them yet. It's still loose. So now I'm going to try and put the, stu put the stud in. I'll try and show you. I don't think you can see very well. Where's the air conditioning label? I don't know if you can read that. This is one pound twelve ounces of R134 or equivalent. So here's the stud that uses uh, number eight E Torx. Number eight E Torx. So let's see if I can feel it. So there's the back of the compressor. There. This is fun, you know. I know you can't see much. Maybe I should get it in and then I'm gonna get I'm gonna put it in and then I'll restart the video with you in a moment. Alrighty, I got the compressor bolted in. So I put the three bolts in the front in first, with them left them loose, then I went around the back and threaded that stud in with the e torque socket and I figured I wouldn't tighten it down all the way. I bottomed it and then undid it half a turn to make it easier to get out next time. And I put the nut on, made it snug, and so then I went to the front, pulled it up to get rid of any slack, and tightened the three nut bolts at the front. Then I went back here and tightened the nut, and it's done. So all that's left now is to put the two seals on to the refrigerant hoses, keeping everything clean, and put the refrigerant hose on. It's easy to get the you know, get this over the stud, and then it slides on, and that should be it. I'll try and charge it. I'll be back with you after it's charged, letting you know the success or failure. Anyway, I hope that helps you remove the compressor, so forget about jacking up the car. You don't need to jack it up at all. Start with just remove the belt, of course. Take off the refrigerant hose. Then you can get behind there and uh, undo the nut on the stud. And then take the stud off. And then take the three bolts off the front and remove the compressor. Oh, and the wire, of course, the little connector down there. Connector. So here are the tools that you need. You need a 916 socket, 3 8 drive, no sorry, 916 half inch drive to undo the nut on the stud. You need an e Torx 8 to undo the stud itself. You need a 13 millimeter to undo the front bolts. And also you need a 15 millimeter to undo the refrigerant holes. Here's the nut that holds the refrigerant holes on. And hope that helps you remove it. It's a lot easier than fiddling around at the bottom. 
And here's the diagram for the refrigerant system. Condenser, the evaporated accumulator, low side service valve, high side service valve. I don't know if you can see this. Here's the chart showing all the different pressures for the system. I don't know if you can read that. So I'm going to try, I only have one can of this at the moment. I'll get another can in town, but that should be enough to get started. This helps me keep the can if I want to use only half of it. I had, had the Dickens getting this adapter from quarter inch from quarter inch SCE to half inch Acme. Oh boy, the hard time getting that. And here's a tip. If I've had good luck with Red Tech sealant, it works. But use this before the sealant. That way, if there's any moisture in the system, we'll get rid of it and the sealant won't clog your system. Never had a problem. I had a leaky comp in my vehicle saver. I put the seal the two types of Red Tech sealant and the dryer and the refrigerant in and after a couple fillings it sealed up and it was good for years. So I hope that helps. Here are the seals. I don't have new seals. I'm going to try using the old ones to take a chance. Probably be okay. I've done it before in other cars. Uh, I don't just uh, soak them with pack oil because uh, it's supposed to... Uh, talk to the mechanics. It's not a problem. They say it's supposed to use mineral oil because uh, pack oil is hygroscopic and it attracts moisture and can uh, corrode the fittings. But Mechanics say they've been doing it for years. Some have replaced compressors that they've replaced before with uh, years before and soaking them in pack oil. They never had a problem with fitting, so big deal. I'll just use my pack oil. Pag 150, that's what specified we'll use compressors. Also, I have my vacuum pump's broken, so for the time being, I'm going to attach uh, the free. Before I attach the hose to the compressor, I'm going to attach the high side fitting here, plug the uh, port on the compressor hose and blow some Freon through the system and try and dispel the air out of here. Then I'll plug it into the compressor. Poor man's flush. I've done that before too, charged it with that atmospheric pressure and it works good. You can tell uh, that uh, you can tell I'm a real shade tree, aren't I? Anyway, hope that helps again. I'll be back with you soon with my successor failure. Okay, here I am as promised with the finale to changing the easy compressor on my uh, 94 beer Goldmaster. Like I said, last uh, last video is I was uh, showing you how to I was going to reconnect the hoses. So I put pag oil on the hoses and the seals and put the hose vent and torqued it down. Then I filled it with uh, filled with a can of refrigerant and as I said this and I said some AC dryer. I think this is important, especially if you use sealant, which I'm not at the moment. But anyway, I, I put this in to dry out the meaning bits of air that I couldn't flush out by putting... I flushed this through the system from the high side to the low through the hoses like I explained in the previous video. That seemed to help. And I put these two cans in, which is equivalent to uh, about 17 ounces. And the system takes one pound 12 ounces. So it was not quite a full charge. I put that in and uh, it, was, it, was, it was holding. So then uh, I turned it on and it was blowing ice cold. I've never seen any so cold before, and it's not even full charge. So then I went to town and got myself another can of this stuff. So our 134, uh, not 134, um, 134, 1234, and 12 equivalent. Same thing, just different brand. And this doesn't have dye in it. I don't like this so much because this has dye, so it would tend to over put too much dye in the system eventually if you keep using it. Anyway, I'll put so between 15 and 2, and uh, this is about 17. I'm sure it's got a full charge, including the low. It's got a little more than a full charge. You take off the little bit that bled out. I bled out the flusher. It should be about right. And here it is now. It's holding, and it works. So there it is. Can you see that? I had it running about half an hour ago. 78 psi static pressure, and it doesn't seem to leak. It's been a few days. I've been keeping an eye on it. I just added the second can today, but before that it was down at 60, and it stayed at 60 for three days. So that's, if it does leak, it's a very slow leak. And like I said, ice cold. Pulling the blower on high, full speed, and it's ice cold with a full speed. It's the first time I've ever had the air conditioning working this car. So there you go, I'll start it up, and show you how the engine starts, show you the pressures, and maybe if, I'll take a little tour of the car. Go for a little drive, maybe. We'll see. So 
feel nice. Nice looking car. I like it. Like it. So I call this a 90% success, so I'll show you what the 10% is in a minute. And listen to the 10% uh, non-success, I'll show you what that is in a moment. I'm going to start this engine. It's amazing how it starts. It starts like this every time. Winter, summer, wind, rain, snow, doesn't matter. Nice. Any time of the year, minus 30, starts like that. So as you see, the compressor is not running yet. So I'm going to turn on the air conditioning and I'll show you the only thing that worries me. I'll turn it on and you can listen. Works fine, it's just a little bit noisy. We call that a growl. The mechanic put a stethoscope on it, said it's not the main bearing, it's the uh, compressor itself. Does that sound normal? Anybody has any opinions on that, chime in. There are the pressures. It's dropping. Suction side 30, high side 150. Ice cold. It's amazing. This is the coldest car I've ever been in. It's just amazing. First time I've had this working since I bought the car. Well, it's piece of throttle, but you can hear the noise. And uh, when it when it drops to 20, the compressor kicks out. PSI, 155 PSI. As I said, ice cold. So aside from the noise, I'm happy. Cold. Okay, I'll button her up for now and walk around the car. Nice and quiet otherwise. These valves are handy on these this fridge and holes I got. with one hand, you know. <laughs> Chain caps. Sometimes I hear a little bit of uh, hissing or popping when I undo these caps. Seems to me the seals should leak, especially the stupid ball valve seal. <coughs> No, it's okay. Anyway, I call it mostly a success. Okay, anyway, if any of you have any opinions or comments on the growling compressor, I appreciate it. But for the time being, I'm just going to say it's fixed. Works great. Doesn't seem to be uh, getting any worse. Maybe it's just the way it is. Sure is cold. Here's another good feature of these cars. Able to turn a U-turn. In almost a two-lane road. Big car. Amazing, eh?